Hi, I'm going to show you how anyone can automate data entry without writing a single line of code using this template and Axiom.ai, a no-code browser automation tool. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. First of all, a bit of context. What this bot does is it reads data from a Google Sheet. I've just got one row of data here, but it can read through multiple rows. It will then open a web page containing a web form and enter that data into the form elements like names, for example, addresses or any other data. The bot, once it's completed one row, will loop through and execute the next. It can be quickly adapted to work with any web form on any web page, and we'll show you how to do that shortly. To get started, of course, you will need a Google Sheet, much like mine. I just added a Added, sorry, I just added a quick row of dummy data to test with, and that's all you need to do. Of course, to use this template, you will need to install it first. So if you've discovered this video on YouTube, go to the Axiom website, axiom.ai, look at the menu at the top and click on templates. You'll find this template and many others. If you're already on the template, page, which you can see on screen, simply click install the template. If you don't have an Axiom account yet, don't worry. Click the button that prompts you to create your Axiom account and get it installed. Okay, let's configure the bot. I've got it installed. I'm going to open it up. And the first step we need to configure is the read data from Google Sheet. It's very straightforward. I want to basically add the Google Sheet I've created here with the dummy data. And I can just search for data entry. There's my sheet. I've only got a single tab in the sheet. So by default, it's selected the sheet name. And here, down in output, I can see the preview of the data I have within that sheet. It's now ready to pass over to the next step. OK. Let's look at step two briefly. It's the loop. We don't need to do anything to set that up. Let's go on to the next step and set up step 2.1, the go to page. What we need to do is load up the web form that we wish to enter the data into. So let's go to the web page with my web form. I've just found an example online. I'm going to get the URL simply and populate the enter URL field simply by clicking the get URL button. You can cut and paste in there and of course you can insert data. That will load the web form. Next, I want to set up step 2.2. I want to pass some data from the Google Sheet using the enter text step. I expand the step. I click select text field, select the field I wish to enter the text into and press complete. I ignore the validation on the page. That's not relevant to what I'm doing. I'm then going to click. I want to then pass the data from the Google Sheet into the text input here. You can see on screen. So I'm going to click Insert Data, open up the Google Sheet, and select my first name in column A. Next, I want to repeat this for step 2.3. This time selecting last name. Again, in the text input, I'm going to click Insert Data, but this time choose column B. Now, most web forms will have more than one text input and different types, so you will want to, you will want to customize this template. Click in between the steps to add new sub-steps in the loop. I'm going to add an additional enter text step. I'm going to press Select Field, and I'm going to add the address in. I'm going to not complete the form for keeping this demo or this how-to video short, and but I am going to insert data once again. And this time, choose column C. Now, I also have a click element that would be used to submit the form. I can try doing that, but it'll obviously fail the validation. But that's what the element be used for. The final step I need to set up for the purpose of this demo is 2.6, where I delete the rows from a Google Sheet. So once I've done all the steps and submitted the form, I want to remove the row that I've just entered in the Google Sheet. That's simple enough to do. I search for my spreadsheet again. I don't need to set the sheet name. 
and then first row to delete and last row to delete is left on one. Now when the bot has finished entering the data, it will delete the row ready to loop through a fresh row of data. The bot's all configured now. You may of course need to add additional steps when automating your web form. And don't forget, you will need to enter a different URL into the GoTo page. Once you're ready and you're satisfied, you're then ready to run the bot. Running your data entry bot. So basically what I recommend when you're building a bot to automate data entry is that every few steps you add to input data into the form, you should run a test and I'd run it on the desktop. So let's go back to the form that you can see on page here. So I'm just gonna run a test to see if the name and last name is entering and of course the street address. So I'm gonna open up the Axiom here. I'm gonna click run. I'm gonna run on desktop. The desktop runner should now open up the web form I'm trying to automate. This is the desktop runner. It's opening up the form in Chrome. Here we can see the form. Shortly I should see Axiom input the name, last name and address. So I can see the bot is running. I can see it also tried to submit and triggered the validation because it hasn't completed the form. So that's a great start. All I need to do now is add my remaining steps to complete the form and I'm good to run the automation. Don't forget, all templates can be customized. For example, if you wanted to receive data from Zapier instead of a Google Sheet, you can simply add, I receive data from another step. And of course, to automate longer forms, you can add additional end to text steps. We also have selects list steps, etc., to help you automate the UI. I do have a few tips for setting up your data entry bot. If you find the enter text step isn't being submitted into the input that you want, please do select it again, simply by pressing select text field, highlighting the step, and then pressing complete. Now, just sometimes those selectors don't work and we recommend using a custom selector if you're experienced using the Chrome Inspector, you'll find that easy enough. Even if you're not that experienced, it's not that hard. The Chrome Inspector is free with Chrome. You can do a right click to locate it and add it. So simply select the element, look for a custom selector. Most inputs have what's called an attribute. Here we've got his name and we could probably use that selector. Let's give it a go and show you how to use a custom attribute selector. We select the field then we press custom. Then I'm going to use the attribute in square brackets where it's highlighted and pick the first name input. So if our selector tool doesn't work, use a custom selector. If you need help with those, Please do reach out via our customer support and we'll help you.